Welcome to this week's Ancient History News. My lead story is about a cave in France where geoscientists have reassessed some upper Paleolithic rock engravings and think that what we're actually looking at is a sophisticated 3D map of the surrounding landscape. What's even more impressive is it appears to have been animated by the clever use of water. I then discuss the ongoing excavations at Kurd Kabustan in northern Iraq that point towards it having been a very important Mesopotamian city in the Middle Bronze Age, and I talk about the discovery of a Neolithic settlement in France. This site dates back close to 7,000 years and is one of only two found in France so far that belonged to the cardial culture. Possibly the earliest known 3D map found in France. Geoscientists Medard Thierry and Anthony Milnes have published a paper in the Oxford Journal of Archaeology detailing their research on carvings in a French cave. The cave, which is known as Segonot les Trois, is located at noisy sur ecole south of Paris, and was inhabited during the Upper Paleolithic. It's one of a series of rock shelters in a sandstone massif upstream from the Seine River, and is known for its ancient engravings of two horses. The research team suggest that hunter-gatherers more than 20,000 years ago not only created these engravings of horses, but also made architectural interventions in the stone to control the flow of water, as well as other rock carvings nearby. Taken together, these may have represented the surrounding landscape, both hydrologically and geomorphologically. It could therefore be the earliest known 3D map. The two horse engravings are stylistically similar to those at the famous Lascaux cave. They are separated by a vulva-shaped crevice and were discovered in the 1950s. It's only recently that researchers noticed other human manipulations of the stone surface around the horses. They argue that natural fractures were widened to guide water into the vulva-shaped crevice and that depressions close by acted as basins collecting water that then drained into other engraved patterns which are meant to represent actual watercourses in the surrounding area. Since this region was full of natural resources 20,000 years ago, including migrating animals, it's possible that the engravings make up a 3D map used as a tool to plan hunting strategies or educate people within the group on the local environment. The whole engraving comes alive when it rains, but ancient hunter-gatherers may have purposefully added water to it when using it as a tool. It's also possible that the map, if that's what it was, had cultural or spiritual significance. What's also interesting is the way in which this hunter-gatherer community were able to represent spatial and functional relationships in the natural environment. Similar, less complex examples have also been found in the Ukraine and on the Iberian Peninsula, but these are more basic depictions of the landscape. I wonder if these geoscientists will apply the same methods to analyse other Upper Paleolithic engravings. If this really was a 3D map of the surrounding landscape, then it's likely that other hunter-gatherer communities had similar skills. It took many decades before these features were noticed at Segonor Le Trois, even though the horse engravings had been known about for a long time. So I do think that other caves will need to be looked at from a fresh perspective site in Iraq may have been the ancient city of Kabra. Archaeologists working at the Mesopotamian site of Kurd Kabistan in northeastern Iraq have discovered clay tablets and the remains of monuments that are important for the understanding of cultural identity in this Middle Bronze Age city. Archaeological information from northern Iraq dating to the Middle Bronze Age is limited compared to that from the south and historical sources are probably biased since they were mostly written by enemies rather than the people that inhabited the region themselves. Therefore, the ongoing work at Kurd Kabistan is helping to shed light on how settlements and communities were structured in that part of Mesopotamia 4,000 years ago. There's also a possibility that Kurd Kabistan was the important ancient city of Kabra, the existence of which is only known about from epigraphy on monuments at other sites. 
The geophysical surveys and excavations are being led by Associate Professor Tiffany Early Spadoni from the University of Central Florida, who recently published her team's latest finds in a fieldwork summary. Previous research at the site revealed that Kurd Kabustan was divided into an upper town located on a 20 meter high mound and a lower town situated on a plain. Both of these sectors were walled and date to 1800 BCE. Older pottery shows that the mound was inhabited even earlier during the 3rd millennium BCE, but it was far from being a city at that time. By the late Bronze Age, the lower town had been abandoned, but the upper town was resettled. At its peak, the site covered 100 hectares and was the largest city on the Erbil Plain. The latest report discusses the discovery of clay tablets inscribed in cuneiform, which are the first of their kind to be found in this part of Mesopotamia, as well as a game board and the remains of buildings. The team have been working in two main areas of the ancient city residential neighbourhoods in the northwest and an administrative complex in the lower town that was likely a palace. So far, the palace has revealed monumental architecture and evidence of destruction, which shows an important historical event must have taken place there. Human remains were also recovered from this complex. In the residential neighborhoods, the archaeologists found exterior courtyards, clay drain pipes, pottery, including plates, bowls, cups, and storage jars, and domestic refuse. Although the pottery was for everyday use, some of it is well made and decorated, which suggests private wealth may have been quite common in the city, a discovery that was unexpected. Animal bones indicate a varied diet that included both domesticated meat and wild game, something else that was not expected amongst non-elite populations in Mesopotamian cities. The team planned to continue research in order to work out whether the city grew organically or was planned and what level of wealth inequality existed there. It's still not clear if Kurd Kabistan was the famed city of Kabra, which was mentioned on old Babylonian monuments such as the Stella of Dadusha. However, so far the finds point to Kurd Kabistan having been a major regional center, so it's possible that further research will be able to identify it as Kabra. Neolithic settlement belonging to the Cardial culture discovered in France. In May last year, the National Institute for Preventive Archaeological Research in France was carrying out excavations at cavalier sur mer in preparation for an urban renewal program when they discovered a Neolithic settlement. Dating to the early Cardial period, which began around 5800 BCE, the site was found underneath four metres of alluvial deposits in a small coastal valley. Only one other site from this time period has been found in France before. The cardial culture are named for the decorations on their pottery made from heart-shaped cardial cells and are thought to have originated in Anatolia before moving west, first into the Aegean and then into what are now Italy, Spain and France. The site is 1.3 metres below middle Neolithic occupation layers that date to around 4800 BCE, pushing this settlement back to an earlier period. Archaeologists discovered a building made up of two parallel stone walls and an apse, measuring 7 by 5 metres. The walls had been reinforced with earth and gravel. Pottery sheds embedded in the walls belonged to the cardial culture, and the overall plan of the building is similar to a cardial period structure previously found in central Italy. Isolated hearths and other structures used for fires were also found. Some of these fire-related structures were surrounded by post holes. It's rare for cardial culture settlements to survive, so this particular site is very rare and has provided insights into how these Neolithic people organised their settlements. That's it. Please hit the like button if you didn't already. Thank you very much to my patrons and channel members. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you next time.